So you know the old saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, stop touching the food at the buffet with your dang hands. I think that's the way the saying goes. Well, look, here at the La Lita Loca Cruise Show, we have pointed out from time to time people making cruise buffet faux pas. And I figured maybe we could do it a little differently today. Maybe we could take a more kinder, gentler approach to how to handle yourself at the buffet. Instead of ridiculing the buffet idiot, instead of ridiculing the person that doesn't know what to do when they're trying to serve themselves some food, instead of doing all that, let's just have a nice educational video today. Let's have a nice educational show. Let's talk about 10 ways to handle yourself at the cruise buffet. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the La Lita Loca Cruise Show. Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Tony B. Let me be your guide into that cruise life today. Welcome again, and if you like that cruising content, please consider subscribing to the show with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss any of our, uh, any of our new episodes. So look, from time to time, you're going to run into a person that handles a cream puff with their bare hands and eats it with their big open mouth over the buffet. It's going to happen. You're going to find people that take all of the fried fish at the buffet, and you're going to have people that touch bread and lick their fingers. You've heard all those stories in 2019. Well, here we are in 2020. How do we stop this buffet madness? Well, I have 10 tips for you today how to handle yourself on the cruise ship buffet. Tip number one, it starts with hygiene. Make sure that you wash your hands before you eat any meal and wash your hands especially before you eat your buffet meal. And on top of that, I'm gonna say take some hand sanitizer with you to the buffet or know where the hand sanitizer station is because not only have you washed your hands before you eat, but after you've handled the same tongs and utensils at the buffet as everybody else, you may want to sanitize your hands before you start shoveling the food in your mouth. Wash your hands and then sanitize post utensil handling. That's tip number one. Tip number two, make a buffet plan. Act like a general in the Great War, scouting out exactly what resources you want to gather for your dining pleasure. Take a walk around. It doesn't take any time. Before you even pick up a plate, have some sort of idea of what looks most appealing to you. I've seen this mistake many times. Somebody rushes up, they grab a plate, and they head off to the first station and they run smack dab into the middle of the salad bar. And there you go. You're piling your plate up with lettuce and cherry tomatoes and half-sliced cucumbers. You're topping it all off with some sort of ranch or blue cheese. And then you look over to your right or you look over to your left and you spy the most succulent looking barbecue ribs. Or you see something fancy that you really wanted to try. You only got two options. You could have to, you can get another plate. That's, that's never fun. Or you can just pile it right on top. I've seen that technique done a lot. You got salad with ranch dressing topped with barbecue ribs. And you know that food's not going to get eaten. That all could have been avoided if you would have just made a food plan, looked around the buffet a little bit. This is gonna help you uh, in two ways. You're not gonna waste food, that's good. And it's gonna help you not overeat. Scout it out, take what you want, and eat what you take. These are good rules of thumb for the buffet. Number three, don't touch the food with your hands. It should be self-evident. Don't touch any food with your hands. They provide utensils for a reason. There are thousands of people cruising with you. They don't want whatever is on your hands to be transferred to food, no matter how casually. If they provide tongs, use the tong. And if you don't see tongs, ask a worker. Don't touch the food with your hands. Number four, and speaking of tongs, make sure that you use the tongs and that you return the utensils or the tongs to the food that you got it out of. Hopefully there's some sort of little plate or dish you can set the tongs down on, but if the tongs have to go back into the food that you just served yourself, make sure it goes back into that food. Don't take the tongs that you picked up the fried fish with and jam it in the tartar sauce or put it in the baked fish 
It's cross-contamination. It, it is actually a food safety issue here. You don't want to mix the utensils from one food to another food. You run the risk of cross-contamination. Number five, don't put food back after you've picked it up out of the dish and put it on your plate. Say you pick up some meatball or some sort of eggplant and you realize you don't like it, just leave it on your plate. I know we talked about food waste, but this is one of those deals where you're just gonna waste the food. Don't take the food back off your plate, even with the tongs, and put it back into the buffet. You may not have cross-contaminated anything. Who knows? It's just bad form. You don't wanna be standing behind the person who has taken food off the buffet, putting it on their plate, putting it back on the buffet. It just seems gross. It could be perfectly fine. Man, I don't, I don't wanna feel like I've picked some food up that somebody else has already picked up and put on their plate. Don't do that. Number six, be mindful of the sneeze guard and don't do crazy things. Most buffets will have a glass guard that covers the food. It doesn't cover it all the way to the ground or anything. There's enough space for you to put your hand in there with some tongs and get the food. But the whole goal is to keep you from breathing, hacking, sneezing, snotting, spitting, whatever happens, it, it's, it's there to keep all that stuff off the food. So don't ever do this. Don't ever stick your whole head under the sneeze guard to get to some food. You're running the risk of putting your dang face so close to the food that you can't help but get your germs on the food. The sneeze guard is there for a reason. And look, it's not there so you can sneeze on it. It's really there to protect the food from any weird stuff that might be coming off of you. So just go under the sneeze guard with the tongs in your hand. Let's not get your whole body under the sneeze guard. I've seen it happen. If you can't reach something, there are staff members there that can help you get the food. Uh, be wary of the sneeze guard. Number seven, and while we're talking about sneezing, yes, do not sneeze over the food. Just because the sneeze guard is there does not mean that the food is completely protected. If you have to sneeze, step back from the buffet. Somebody's gonna let you back in line. They're gonna be happy that you did not sneeze on the buffet and sneeze into your shoulder. Don't sneeze onto your skin. Don't sneeze onto your hands. Turn your head into your body. Bring your shoulder up to your nose and sneeze into your shoulder and do it away from the buffet. Nobody wants to get sick just because they're trying to have a meal. And snotting all over the place is a good way to get people sick. Be mindful when you're sneezing at the buffet. Number eight, use a clean plate when you go back to the buffet. They are constantly washing dishes. You do not have to take your soiled plate from your chair all the way up to the buffet to get more food. Again, this runs into areas of cross-contamination and poor sanitation. Let the crew staff take your plate away and use one of the clean plates. There's no, you're not benefiting anybody by using the same plate. Uh, I've seen people walk up to the buffet with a half-eaten plate. It doesn't make sense, don't do it. Number nine. Don't eat in line. Don't eat over other food. When we eat, our mouth produces saliva. Most food that you eat produces crumbs. The whole, you gotta breathe. Breathing, eating, chewing, all of that uh, produces debris. Sometimes it's so microscopic you cannot see it. And that debris becomes airborne when it leaves your mouth and starts floating around all over the place. I don't want it floating on my food at the buffet. Please do not eat at the buffet. Even if you can stick the whole bite in your mouth, there's no guarantee that your crumbs and your food are not gonna go into the other food. Super gross, don't eat at the buffet. And number 10, if you are somebody who is traveling with children, help the children have good buffet etiquette. Kids don't necessarily know not to grab the food. They don't necessarily know not to sneeze wherever they're standing. There's so many things on this list that you gotta train up the children well not to do it. And so if you are there, if you're a parent in charge of a child and you don't think they know these buffet etiquette rules, go to the buffet with them, guide them, lead them into the future with your wisdom and your knowledge. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing some kid that's been abandoned by their parent 
grabbing food from the buffet, sneezing on the buffet, cutting line. It's super frustrating. I'm all for everybody cruising. I'm all for kids cruising. But some cruisers need a little more supervision than others, and those are usually our younger cruisers. And if that's your kid, it's up to you to make sure that they're doing the right thing at the buffet. And I got a couple bonus tips for you. And let me tell you the second bonus tip, I wish I could have taught this to a person face to face because I was hot. But the first one, very simply, what do you do with your napkin when you go back to the buffet for a second round? I've seen it done a couple ways. A lot of times if you put your napkin in your plate, it signals to the service staff that you're done eating. Uh, if you put it off to the side, you run the risk of your napkin getting knocked all over the place when they're busting off your dirty dishes. Uh, an easy way to do it is to put your napkin in your chair. It signals a couple things. First, that you're coming back and it moves your napkin out of the way when they're trying to clean off the table. That way you don't have to worry about your napkin falling onto the floor. Napkin on the chair is a good way to signal that you're coming back from the buffet, that you're not done. Now the second one, the do not reach around another person to get food or in this case, drink. I was on the spectrum of the seas last October and I was in line for the sweet, delicious breakfast juice, which was a hot commodity on this cruise. Uh, the staff could not keep it filled. And as I approached the breakfast drink, uh, there was very little left, but enough for me to get my juice. I knew this for sure. And I stepped up and I was directly in front of the little spout where I was gonna pull down and get my breakfast drink. I reached over, just over here to grab a cup. And as I was reaching for this cup, I saw out of my periphery, another cup come in to the dispenser along with a hand and the last bit of breakfast juice, the sweet succulent breakfast juice was taken as I stood in front after patiently waiting my turn. I was hot. I was, but you know, in a moment the person was gone. I wasn't going to track them down over some breakfast juice. But I thought, man, what a set of stones. What gumption this man had to step in front of me and take the last drink. <sighs> don't reach around people. You don't want to tempt them to jostle their food. If you're at the buffet, uh, just wait your turn. Everybody will hang out. And man, don't take the last breakfast drink, especially if you're not in line. Now I've referenced it a couple times, the ladies that ate the cream puff over the buffet, you gotta check that video out, it's a good one. I hope you learned something here today, if so, please hit the like button. This is Tony B with the La Lida Loca Crew Show, and until the next episode, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.